Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper. Just a reminder, this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to discuss your concerns. You can find my books on Amazon, my videos are on YouTube, or you can listen to my podcast, Life Without Baggage, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. Many people are confused as to why if they're praying and reading their Bible and trying to follow God, why things don't get better. And so I did a presentation at a church where I explained the overlap between body, soul, and spirit and how spiritual approaches won't solve every problem. So I hope this will be informative and useful for you if you struggle with some of those issues. But how could I have let my my soul get to the place where I was so anxious and stressed out that I had this physical episode? And I am so much more emotionally soul healthy, which is what you're going to talk about today and share with us. But Dr. Tony has some amazing things to share with us. The first service was awesome, and I know this is going to be uh, as well. So we're going to throw the questions up on the screen for you and just uh, walk through this uh, uh, one question at a time. So Dr. Tony, all right, how is it useful uh, to look at our soul uh, from a psychological perspective? You shed some light on that. There you go. So I like to look at things from what the Bible says. So in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, we're told that God designed us with a spirit, a soul, and a body. And in Ephesians 2, we're told that our spirit is either alive or dead. So if you want your spirit to be alive, we do that by inviting Jesus to be our Savior. Mm -hmm. And then we have the power to access God's presence and his presence his um, supernatural grace and power for daily living. Our bodies, obviously, are the physical place that our personality and our spirits dwell and the source of our appetites. And then the soul is your mind, your emotions, your will, which is your ability to choose right and wrong, and then your need for social engagement, social connection. So it's important as we navigate different parts of life that we understand what dimension needs attention. I like to use the example that if you've been on vacation or had an extensive holiday, that you might put on 10 pounds that you don't want. Well, you can pray, God, please take this away. But prayer doesn't burn up very many calories. So you'll probably need to exercise and change how you eat if you want to lose that weight. Amen. We've been there, done that. Okay. <laughs> so then if you, so again, to just outline what the soul is, the soul is the way that you think, your feelings, um, your will, and then your need for social connection. I was thinking so much about gaining the weight on vacation because I always do that, that I forgot to go to the next question. That's anyway. okay. So, but you covered that. So, so what the soul is, and that's really where I think a lot of us don't understand who we are, the theology of personhood, just the spirit, the soul, and the body. So I hope that was helpful to you. That really was helpful to me in understanding how important the soul part of me is and how Christian counselors, psychologists can help us in this area. Okay, so that's, that's a huge thing. So could you give us an example of a soul issue so we understand what we're talking about? Okay, yeah. so one common soul issue or condition is depression. And if we look at this again through spirit, soul, and body, uh, with the body, there are times in Ohio where we get very little light. And for many people, this can create a a condition of depression because of the lack of light to the brain. Also, there are issues of brain chemistry that tend to run in families that can lead a person into depression. So no amount of faith changes what's happening in your body. From a spiritual standpoint, whether we're talking about depression or anxiety, if we see God as someone who's hard to please, who's easily angered, who is remote and disinterested in your feelings, that just wants robotic obedience, that's going to make it hard to approach him 
for the help that you need or to feel connected to him in your day-to-day life. And from the soul, if we've been through a lot of losses, retirement, empty nest, losing a loved one, a breakup, that these are things that can, can put us into a place of depression. Yeah. And it's very easy to get stuck. So share maybe one more example of a soul issue that most of us experience. So. Okay. Yeah. So panic, as you mentioned, yeah. anxiety, yeah. very common experiences in this day and age. Uh, from a physical standpoint, if you've been through any kind of trauma, uh, abuse, a crime, some kind of violent crime, medical trauma, there's lots of things that affect how our brains and bodies react. And again, it would be nice if we could just grit our teeth and make these things change, but we really don't have control over some of the things that go on in our bodies. If you have a lot of caffeine, if you don't get enough sleep, you are putting your body in in a situation where you're overstimulated and very vulnerable to stress. Hmm. Uh, Soul issues would be, many of us, fear rejection. We fear abandonment. We fear failure. If you're very self-critical, if you tend to be a perfectionist, you're going to probably have a lot of anxiety. So um, Hmm. these are things that, again, very common in the human experience, very easy to get stuck because we all have blind spots. Yeah. So how can we get healthier psychologically? Okay. Well, there's a few things that help. I have a YouTube channel, and many of these are outlined and then detail in uh, the video, How to Advance Without Baggage. But the first point is we need to cultivate our relationship with Jesus Christ. It says in Psalm 23 that he restores my soul. Amen. So we want to know how to lead into Jesus on a day-to-day basis. Psalm 46 says, be still and know that I am God. So we want to develop a practice of being still in his presence so he can speak to us. He's our gentle shepherd. He speaks peace to us. We might be afraid he's going to say something mean to us if we sit still long (laughs) enough. But it says that Jesus speaks peace. That's in Psalms also. I think it's 89. Um, And then we also want to cultivate time in his word. It's God's word that transforms us. We're transformed through the spirit of God, the word of God, the people of God. So we need community. We need to be, you know, in church. That's not trendy these days. But (laughs) we need that community. We need to be in God's word so that our minds are transformed. That's in Romans 12. And so that we can advance spiritually. Receiving Jesus as your savior is the beginning of your relationship. And any relationship, if it's going to do us any good, has to be cultivated. So secondly, we need good supports. We need at least one person we can be real with who will be kind to us and tell us the truth. And then we can get those supports through Bible study, through church, through 12-step groups. There's lots of ways to get connection. And it's also very important that we, as much as possible, live a balanced life. We're body, soul, and spirit. Our spirit needs attention. We've been talking about that. Our relationships need attention. People live longer and live happier lives when they have meaningful connections. And then we've talked about ways to work on your thinking, to get supports, get enough sleep, try to get exercise, try to eat healthy. Again, the healthier you are, body, soul, and spirit, the better you'll cope with life. So if you get stuck, make sure that you give someone a chance to help you. We're not designed to be lone rangers. You have a pastor who's interested in your well-being. Hopefully you have a friend, a doctor, you can get a therapist, a 12-step group, your Bible study group, small groups of any kind. Lean out, reach out, lean into some kind of assistance because we're not designed to do this alone. And then the other thing that I really encourage people to do that a lot of Christians don't understand is that we need to learn how to use our faith aggressively. Psalm 46 tells us to be still, but in Matthew it says, 
The kingdom of God suffers violence, mm. and the violent mm -hmm. take it by force. Amen. And in Ephesians chapter 6, we're told that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against wickedness, spiritual wickedness. So without being afraid, we need to know how to declare the word of God yeah, yeah. over our lives, over our circumstances, over our family members, to declare the names of God that we reviewed um, earlier in pastor's Amen. message yeah. today. Declare those names of God over yourself, over your situation. And then as we grow together with other believers, as we cultivate our relationship with Jesus Christ, as we allow God's word and God's people to shift ways of thinking that aren't good for us, yeah. then we can begin to live victorious Christian Amen. lives. Yeah, awesome. Preach it, Dr. Tony. That was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> praise the Lord. Like, amen. <laughs> Sets the spirit, right? Yeah. So... Uh, drtonycooper.com. Uh, you want to write that down, check that out. All of these resources are available that she's been talking about. And right now, we're going to uh, be led by Dr. Tony through just a prayer of declaration uh, that uh, she has prepared for us. Here we go. Dr. Tony, go ahead and lead us uh, through this prayer. Let's all say this together. Yes, will you join me to declare these promises over Amen. yourself? Thank, Thank you, you, Lord, that, that you shed, shed your blood on, on the cross, cross for me. me to enter into covenant with you and receive all the blessings that God intended for me to have. Thank you for the supernatural way that you step in to meet my needs as I align myself with you. You want to restore me to my original design and purpose before the ravages of loss, stress, and trauma took their toll. Grant me a sense of your presence as I spend time with you and position myself to walk in your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So be it. So let's stand to our feet. The Holy Spirit is here. Thanks for listening. If this helped you, check out my other videos on YouTube. You can listen to my podcast, Life Without Baggage, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. You can find my books on Amazon or visit my website to find out about scheduling a speaking engagement. Thanks for listening.